we can start. Welcome everybody to the people close. You don't see there's quite a big of an audience here and all the people online. Uh, and just before we start with the introduction for the speakers for Nokubonga, I'd like to give a couple of uh, logistics. Uh, at the end of the talk, we're gonna take questions. You can either, for the people online, write your questions and uh, lucky, uh, we'll, we'll just pass them on to us. Or you can just raise your hand and we can all hear you uh, here in the room. So you can just raise your hand to pose the question. For the people in the house, uh, raise your hand and please stand up. It's not a song, um, <laughs> but uh, so that your volume is quite high so that everyone online can also hear you. So now I think we can give a little uh, introduction to Nokubonga, uh, the speakers for today. Welcome. First of all, this is our second seminars for uh, this year, and uh, uh, Nokubonga Mbanzi is our um, presenter today. Um, Nokubonga did a kind of a round trip. She uh, got her uh, uh, BSc in microbiology and zoology from the University of Forte. Um, she did the honors also at the University of Forte, and then she arrived to uh, Saya to do her master's in uh, 2015, 2016. Then she moved back uh, to her close to her home um, in, and she studied and she did a PhD at Walter Sisulu University in from 2019 to 22. So she literally just graduated. And this year she returned to SIA at the beginning of the year to start um, postdoctoral uh, fellowship uh, within uh, our team, the Coastal and Ocean Sciences um, uh, team. So today you're going to hear a, a little bit of a mix of presentation from Nokubonga, uh, and the title is there. Uh, she's going to present um, on the topic of using bioindicators organisms to understand the chemical pollutions in intertidal uh, systems. So off to you, Nokubonga. Thank you. Thank you so much, Francesca, for the lovely introduction. And thanks to all the listeners here in the room and also to those who are listening to us all online. I am very excited to celebrate this day with the Ocean Friends. Uh, that's how I would like to say the World Ocean Day. Um, I want to take you through my talk. I will briefly talk about some of the inspirational moments that has led me to pursue the marine studies. I'll also briefly talk about my PhD findings and later on end my talk by introducing my postdoc project, which is the project that I'm currently doing. So I originally uh, come from the rural areas of Port St. John's and growing up, it is where we fish for food or sell rather than studying fish. And growing up, I've, I've seen people using ocean for quite different reasons, the obvious one being the food, and some they would use it for, for swimming, the spiritual purposes, and some they would use it for the traditional purposes. But then um, this does show that there's a link or there's a close connection between uh, people and the ocean. The, my perception of understanding how the oceans were important or how they provide some important benefits to human, it really changes when it changed when I was first into, introduced to Usayab in 2011, coming from University of Forte to, to a tour. I saw something that I've never seen, uh, I've never seen before, seeing people from different gender, different race, and different age group studying about the ocean and studying about the, the fish. And I thought that was amazing and fascinating to me. Also seeing the most um, uh, silicate fish, the, its movement, it, it, I was so mesmerized by its movement. So seeing all that, in my mind, after the tour, I was like, I think this, this is easy. If the, the, all they do is to study about fish, I think it is. But little did I know, <laughs> The easy part, um, it, it's not easy at all. Uh, they, at SIAB, they're doing an amazing research, um, the cutting edge research, uh, studying about fish and all other um, organisms in all aquatic water bodies. Later in the years, it was that curiosity that led me to be interested in the marine pollution studies. 
Now, with all the with all the, the benefits that the ocean provides, they, they do suffer in, um, in some of the um, pollution and the, in the overchanging climate, they are also being affected by that. So in my PhD studies, I was interested in understanding uh, the distribution of metals and their magnification in the using the limpet uh, shellfish. I was also interested in integrating the metal analysis and the stable isotope analysis in order to understand the trophic transfer of these metals. Uh, however, we've used a short food, food web from the microalgae, which are the food source for the limpets. We were also interested in comparing the metals that we've measured in the, the, the tissues of these limpets uh, to the regulatory limits that are being set uh, by the Department of Health in South Africa. So heavy metals <coughs> being the element with high density mass and um, uh, atomic weight, they come from different distributional source. They have uh, different distributional um, sources, be it anthropogenic sources or the natural sources. Once these uh, metals uh, are in, uh, in the environment, they can sink in sediments, they can concentrate in waters, in all aquatic waters, but in our case, we'll be talking about the seawater, specifically the, the, the coastal areas in rocky shores. And since there are organisms in those areas, they concentrate and bioaccumulate in the organisms. And in our case, you will hear us uh, me talking more about the shellfishes. And they can be transferred in the human body through uh, seafood consumption. If a human consume those uh, fish selected in, in those seawater um, environment and consume those uh, fish, they can um, be exposed to the heavy metals. Now, in this study, we've selected the essential metals and the non-essential metals. In the essential metals, which are called the biometals, because they, um, they are the micronutrients. They provide some benefits in, in the organism. Um, in the other, on the other hand, the non-essential metals, they are known to be toxic, even if they are available at the minimal level. Um, the essential metals, even though they provide these uh, benefits, if they're also available above the required level in organisms, well, they can also um, pose some toxic um, uh, effects. Now, because the the stable isotope is then inter, uh, is integrated into the consumer's diet. In this study, we we've used the stable isotope analysis in order to assess that um, trophic transfer of the metals. Now, the nitrogen and carbon isotope they are known to be useful tool as they are interpreting the interaction in the food web structures. Uh, the carbon isotope, it, it, it indicates the consumer's food source, while the nitrogen isotope, it indicates the level of the consumer. They are also known to determine, and they have been used to determine the transfer of contaminants. And in our case, we've used it in, in, in determining the transfer of uh, metal through the food web. Um, nitrogen isotope, which we'll be focusing more on it because we've used it as a proxy to determine this um, transfer with the integration of uh, biomagnification factor. Um, we will be focusing more on it in the later uh, slides as we continue. Now the BMF, which is a biomagnification factor, if it's greater than one, it indicates the, the biomagnification of metals through the, in, into the next trophic level. Why? If the BMF is less than one, it indicates a possible biodiversity of those metals through the 
trophic level. Now, in our data collection, we've selected four sites along the southeast coast of South Africa, where we had four species of limpets, two which are okay in the upper shore of, of the region and are generalistic feeders, and two, they are okay in the lower shore, and they are the specialist feeders in their behavior. Uh, simultaneously, we also collected the uh, food source, uh, the, the macroalgae, three species of them, just to, in order for us to assess that trophic transfer of metals. We also measured the physical chemicals, temperature, salinity, and uh, dissolved oxygen. However, I'm not going to be talking about those results here, but I just wanted to, to mention out to you because uh, one may wonder since the physical chemical uh, parameters are known to have an impact in the bioavailability of, of metals. We also measured, um, collected the seawater samples so that later on we do the metal analysis. Now in the lab, we, we've removed the, all the unwanted materials in both the shellfish and the macroalgae. Later on, we uh, oven dried the tissues uh, at different uh, temperature levels and crushed the, 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 the samples into powder and later on packed the samples for the heavy metal analysis and the stable isotope analysis in separate packages. So what you see here as the, the results of the heavy metal distribution in microalkyl species, those three species, RD, Ralsia verrucosa, UL, Uva, Lactuca, and GP, Gelidium pristoides. So what I want you to notice here is that the two species, which is uh, Uva, Lactuca, and Ralsia verrucosa, they had a similar pattern of concentrating um, and uptaking these essential metals, zinc, iron and copper and that the toxic metal, which is cadmium. And on another hand, uh, Ralsia, it was an exceptional in uptaking the toxic uh, metals, which is arsenic lead and, and nickel, even though, as well as, as mercury. Now, even though uh, geridium pristoid is showed to have minimal concentration values in, in their tissue than tissues than the other two species. The mercury uh, was showing to elevate at some, at some point. So what you see here is the metal concentration in, in limpet tissues. Uh, I want you to notice that the, the lower shore species, especially Selana capensis, which is, I can't point, Selana capensis uh, uh, species, concentrated more of arsenic, lead, um, and mercury. This one, arsenic, arsenic, lead, and mercury, the species, most of the times. And the upper shore species, which is, no, the, the lower shore species, which are Scutellastra longcosta SL and Scutellastra cochlea SC, they accumulated higher concentration of zinc and cadmium. So what we can see here is that uh, these species, they concentrated these metals um, in, in, in differently. So meaning it was species specific. Also, I want you to notice that to all the differences that we see here, winter contributed the most to these, to these differences. Um, while the other, while during the other season, it, it, they seem to concentrate metals in, in a uniform way, except for, for lead, which had higher concentration um, in summer. After comparing our results with the, the regulatory limit set by the DOH, we found out that our results are above this regulatory limit. And mostly that, that was um, shown by this toxic metal, your cadmium, arsenic, lead, and mercury. I didn't find any um, new regulatory limit set for, for the other metals. 
And I think if we are to monitor these metals um, and understand their concentration and their biotransference, also these regulatory limits, they need to be set for assessing the health uh, status. So here, what I wanted to, to, to show you, I just wanted to briefly talk about these um, results. I'm not gonna go into depth. Uh, I wanted to show the nitrogen. You can notice here that the nitrogen isotope was enriched in the limpet species than the microalga species. And that is not surprising because normally the, the tissues are normally enriched in nitrogen than the the plant, which is a microalgae in our in our case. Interestingly, I, I found out that the scutellastra, which is a limpet, SL and Rafsia verrucosa, which is a microalgae, they had they were enriched in in, in carbon isotope uh, having almost similar uh, similar patterns in both springs. And this confirms what we already know that indeed the scutellastra uh, preys on the Rafsia verrucosa. So, using our nitrogen isotope um, results, we've calculated our biomagnification factor. And if you can remember, we said the biomagnification, if BMF is greater than one, it, it indicates a, a possible. Uh, biomagnification of the metals to the next trophic level. And if it's less than one, it indicates a biodilution. So here I want you to, to grab your attention into these two uh, metals. If you remember in our previous slides, we had higher concentrations of arsenic and, and iron. However, even though we had higher concentrations of these metals, they didn't show um, to biomagnify to the neostrophic level. And for me, for arsenic, it wasn't surprising because most of the studies, they, they do mention that arsenic um, biodilute um, rather than biomagnifying. And I think as for iron, I think it's because it's also, um, it's also an essential element that is used as the micro, you get uh, micronutrients and it would take a very high uh, maybe ion to be toxic. And they are used in the other en enzymatic activities. So for now, that's all I can uh, quite explain these differences. The cadmium, which is a toxic element and mercury, they show a high rate of biomagnification, especially cadmium, it was, uh, indicating high rate of biomagnification from metal from microalgae to limpets. So in all of this, we can say limpets, as they bioaccumulate the metals, they are indeed bio uh, good bioindicators of the contaminants in the aquatic system. And as they provide the not only the as they, they, they provide the services of not only bioaccumulating metals, but also they are regarded as the food source. We can say they, they, are the, um, they provide the good services in the marine uh, ecosystems. Now, in our water samples, which is the results that you didn't see because we I decided to not show those results because the concentration levels that we've measured in water, they were below the detection limits. And this can possibly mean that the high concentration that we found or were measured in limpets, um, they were not significantly impacted by the concentration in, in the water. And BMF confirmed that indeed diet is another pathway of transferring these metals to the next trophic level, we've seen our biomagnification uh, factor being high. And in between species, as we already mentioned that the upper shore species, they seem to concentrate more of 
the toxic metals um, in higher concentration than the lower shore species. Now, after my, my PhD, there were some questions that I wished I would have answered before. And when I got the opportunity of doing this postdoc, I was really excited because I knew some of the questions maybe I'll be able uh, to answer. Now, even though there is available literature with regard to the bio uh, accumulation and contamination in the organism's tissue, they, there are few studies on metal bioaccumulation and contamination in, in, in the organism's tissue from the urban coastal system. Further, there is a little information on the role of the filter feeders and also the grazers uh, to sink metals. Uh, as well as there's little information with regard to the risk assessment of metals in the urban coastal areas. Now, lots of literature uh, uh, over the, uh, all over the globe, they've indicated that filter feeders, they are a, a good bioindicators as they accumulate uh, the metals. Um, and they, are, they use these bioindicators to assess the health state of the coastal ecosystem, thereby potentially bioaccumulation uh, bio of the, the, these metals could prevent the spread of the toxic metals in this marine ecosystem. And in overall, we can say they can improve the water quality of the ecosystem and also enhance the ecological health state of the urban coastal sites. We've selected six sites, two large ports, which is the port of Nuha, port of PE, and two natural sites, Kini Bay and Cannon Rock, and uh, two small ports, Port of Port Alfred and St. Francis Bay as well. On our collection uh, targets, we've selected the filter feeders, which include your mussels, barnacles, and oysters, and also the grazers, which are limpets, their potential uh, prey, uh, algae, <laughs> as well as see what we we'll collect, we we'll collect seawater samples, we we'll collect sediments, and measures the physical chemical parameters as well. So for this study, our, our overall aim uh, is to assess the distribution and the trophy transfer of metals in the selected intertidal um, invertebrates and also assess the ecological health risk implication and determine bioremediation of the metals at urban and the natural rocky shore sites. And now we aim to achieve this um, uh, aim by assessing the metal concentration and accumulation in the selected invertebrate species. And also would we'll couple or integrate the stable isotope uh, analysis with metal analysis in order to assess the trophy transfer of metals. We are also interested in developing uh, the health risk indices and assess bioremediation of metals. And later on, uh, it was also important to compare the permissible limit prescribed by the World Health Organization, which is who the Food uh, Agriculture Organization and the Department of Health in South Africa with the metal concentration that we will measure in our present study. And the finding of this project, we hope that they will advance advance the knowledge on health status of the urban coastal sites. Uh, we hope that it, they will open up some new research questions uh, which are relevant. And also we hope that the results will be necessary for, develop, for the development of appropriate strategies for monitoring of the contamination or contaminants in the coastal areas. And I, I do, in my opinion, I do want to end my talk by saying um, the future of our ocean really relies on what we do and act upon in the now. Hence, the innovative technologies are needed to mitigate the impact of pollution for the sustainability or the restoration of our ocean. And I've seen some innovative technologies, and this is not new 
most people have used a, a, a bioremediation uh, to try to remove the contaminants, in our case, heavy metals in the marine or the ocean environment. Thank you. Thanks so much, Nakubonga. I learned a lot more now of the relation between metals and stable mm -hmm. isotopes. Really, really interesting. Um, Lucky, how do you want to go? Shall we see if there's any questions on live, and then see if there's anything on the um, on the on the web? Yes, I have two questions. Yes, yes. thanks, Nakubonga. That was great. Um, have you considered? Um, because you said there were no information with regards to the level, the levels, mm -hmm. uh, zinc. I think it was zinc and oh. uh, have you have you um, considered doing some experimental studies and see um, the upper tolerance, like the limit? Um, have, have you considered that before? And that was the first question. The second mm -hmm. question is, um, in your data collection, have did you? observe any deformities or any impacts um, as a result of uh, the, the exposure to different uh, metals. metals. Yes. Lovely. Um, in my, during my project, at the, at the start of my project, I was really excited. I wanted to do some setup and do some experimental um, um, assessment, but I couldn't do that because of the materials and um, all the other logistics. But it, that would have been lovely to do it as well, because some other studies they have done some uh, toxicity test, uh, some uh, assessing the impact of metals in the end of endocrine grams or the, the, re, the Re respiratory system, how they affect all that. But in my case, I, I, I didn't. I do believe that they will, we would find some impact. Yeah. And it would be but nice if you can feel that mm, table. Mm, yeah, those gaps I, there. Yeah. yeah, but I didn't, but I would have, I would yeah. have loved to. And did, but did you, did you observe any deformities maybe on, on the, the, the limpets themselves? Maybe corroded shells or something as as a result of, 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 of metals. metals. No, and I don't think that you can easily say by only observing with yeah. your eyes. You would have to do yeah. your, your physiology, like you were yeah. saying or suggesting, and then you would compare that information, the ecological information with your experiments, then you can come up yeah. with your... Because I'm thinking it would be beneficial to whoever is eating that to you know okay mm. if it's like this then it's it's probably contaminated then we shouldn't be we eating shouldn't this, be eating you know this. so i think this information maybe it, it is important to for the authorized people to set these regulatory yeah. limits because that's that's only that's the only way we would know uh, either is this uh, healthy or not when we saw those um, standards limits being set <laughs> i think so Thanks, Obama. Thanks. Thanks, Mr. Thanks. Any more questions? Like, is there anything online? Um, I've got a question, but we have discussed this quite a long time <laughs> about your results. So you said the, the transfer of metal is through diet because yes. the, the water didn't have high level of metals. But then where do the plants or the prey get these metals if it's not from the water? So in the case of the plants, um, they obviously concentrate the, these metals form from the, from the water. And we can remember that uh, once these uh, metals are being concentrated, they, some, they do have a long lifetime in the, in the tissues. So another reason for higher concentration, it could be that they, they, they have a long persistence or it could potentially mean other reasons as well, but that's the only way I could think of. Thank you so much. There is, no, there is only, there is a nice uh, message from Sonelo. Hi, Sonelo. Good work, dog. Good luck on your future research. Thanks. Thanks, Sonelo. Any other comment uh, or compliments to Nakubonga? Be happy with both. <laughs>
Any other question from the audience in house? Not. I think everyone wants to continue go, especially inside the house, to go study for this afternoon ocean quiz. Yeah. <laughs> so I think um, I would like to thank you, everyone in house and online for today's, and thank you, especially Nokubonga. So I think she deserves another round of applause. Yeah. And um, I wait for you um, and for the next time series of the, the third uh, seminars that is going to come sometimes in July. So have a good day and enjoy the Ocean's Day. And thank you for coming or listening. Thank you. 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 Thank you.